Decisions made in the fields of politics and law often lead to controversy and discussion. One such choice that has caused controversy lately is Cyril Ramaphosa's choice of legal counsel. Please hit on the subscribe button. Do not forget to like, comment, and share. This person, a lady, has been assigned to make sure that no ANC member who is charged with stealing goes to prison. The appointment has caused some taxpayers to wonder why public monies are being used for such things. It has been noted that this lady has chosen to stand up for ANC members who are accused of corruption. While some perceive it as an obvious abuse of public funds, others see it as a calculated attempt to preserve the party's credibility. There is disagreement among the public on whether or not this choice serves justice well or is simply a political ploy to protect wrongdoers. As the story progresses, concerns about the accountability and openness of people in positions of authority surface. In an already complicated web of power relations, the involvement of legal counsel in high-profile cases involving political actors adds another level of complication. Every step is closely watched in a stressful atmosphere created by the public's desire for justice and the complexities of judicial processes. The lady at the heart of all of this has to deal with the demands of her position while under constant criticism from both admirers and detractors. Future court cases and political environments will surely be influenced by her choices and actions. Many are concerned about the ramifications for justice and government since the result of this high-stakes situation is still undetermined. Jacob Zuma, the former president of South Africa, is involved in a controversy once again, this time over his possible involvement in the VBS Mutual Bank affair. There are rumors that the troubled bank, which has been charged with massive corruption and financial misbehavior, gave Zuma a loan of our 6.5 million. Remarkably, in the face of growing proof of misconduct, Zuma has adamantly refused to return the borrowed money. The 2018 VBS Mutual Bank scandal exposed a network of corruption including prominent business people and politicians. The bank, which was formerly praised for its community-oriented endeavors, crumbled due to deceitful operations and unlawful loans. Members of the Economic Freedom Fighters EFF, who also collected substantial amounts from VBS under questionable conditions, were among those accused. Zuma's detractors claim that his failure to repay VBS for the R6.5 million loan shows a flagrant disrespect for justice and responsibility. Had the money been reimbursed, they may have been designated for the benefit of widows, orphans, and other marginalized individuals who lost their life savings due to the collapse of the VBS. Rather, by making matters worse for individuals impacted by the scandal, Zuma's actions have increased public suspicion of financial and political institutions. Calls for Zuma to return the loan amount have been louder in response to growing pressure. In addition to being a question of financial reparation, advocates for openness and moral leadership maintain that retrieving these monies is also a symbolic step toward justice for the people who lost everything in the VBS scandal. The inability to bring individuals responsible for the bank's collapse accountable has highlighted ongoing difficulties in South Africa's battle against financial fraud and corruption. The investigation into Jacob Zuma's participation is still ongoing, and the public's attention is still focused on the issue, but it serves as a clear reminder of the ongoing fight against corruption in the nation's political class. The conclusion of the story might have a significant impact on South Africa's democratic integrity and its continuous fight to protect the rule of law, as demands for accountability are becoming more and more popular. Parties inside the government of national unity, GNU, battled over the contentious legislation, causing disruption during the first discussion of the National Health Insurance, NHI, bill in the seventh parliament. The contentious discussion revealed fundamental inconsistencies within the GNU, raising questions about the viability of the measure. The Congress of South African Trade Unions, COSA II, and the South African Communist Party, SACP, two of the GNU supporters, opposed the African National Congress, ANC, claiming that the NHI law puts private health care ahead of public. According to the ANC, the bill's goal is to provide health care coverage to everyone. Dr. Martin Greenwald, the legislative head of COSA II, criticized the law, claiming it entrenches inequality and undermines public health care. Similar views were expressed by SACP colleague Bladen Zimmond, who called the NHI bill a neoliberal assault on our health care system. 
Both the Democratic Alliance, DA, and the Economic Freedom Fighters, EFF, 